Oh, good, we're live. So, so I want to wish everybody happy holidays, everything you you celebrate and everything you do. Um, gosh, we have Cleo here. She doesn't like the fire. So, anyways, uh, excuse my lack of Christmas decorations. I am busy renovating my house. I just have my tree up and nothing's as pretty as it was last time I did something. So, um, so anyways, I'm doing it on YouTube now. I'm trying to get more on my YouTube. So I'd like to thank all my new subscribers following my, my live streaming now that I have the PlayStation 4 going and my Assassin's Creed Odyssey gaming. And now I figured out how to use the microphone on the on that so i'll probably stream tonight when i'm done with all my work i'm getting everything ready for my yule gathering which is going to be super small this year but um so what we're going to talk about today is just friendship and being a decent human being so this year as many of you have known um it's been really tough i've been attacked i've been bullied um to the point of hospitalization it's it's been crazy. It's a crazy year for all of us. And, and I don't want any of you to feel like you're alone. Cause I, if you are a subscriber or anything, shoot me a message. I'm always checking my messages. I'm kind of neurotic about that. Every morning I wake up, I always check my messages on all my social media platforms. So if you need someone just to hear you out, vent salt, what have you, I'll listen to you. Just don't expect me to take sides in anything because that's the worst. And I don't ever want anybody to take sides in anything I'm in. I just tell you how it is and let you decide. But so first we're going to talk about um, dealing with service dogs. Um, I've had, because this year, my PTSD has gotten worse. My um, social anxiety has now escalated to now diagnosed full out social phobia. So I'm okay doing this, but going out and seeing people, I'm scared to death of what people are thinking of me and everything. So Cleo has now been upgraded. She's been taken out of retirement. She was first just a autism support dog. Um, for those of you that are my new subscribers, I am autistic. I, um, I'm transgender. I cannot transition because my um, I, my mental health is too bad, um, and I'm bi-gendered, so I go back and forth. So, um, but I do have the gender dysphoria, and it's pretty crappy, and I've been going through through it today. So, but um, so anyways, Cleo has been taught new tasks. She's been taught help. So I'll I'll do this, and she will jump up and then put her weight on me for deep pressure therapy, and just to be kind of like a little hug. Um, and, but when we're out and about, and this was a problem I had with my big Akita too, is people will not get a clue that do not touch this dog. She's working. She's, I know she's cute. She's adorable. She's absolutely gorgeous. I know. Um, she's already dealing with my shenanigans. She doesn't need to deal with anybody else's. Um, Thankfully, I have a more polite people uh, with their kids and um, the, the, the kids will, you know, politely ask, can I pet your dog? And I'm just like, no, she's working. I'm sorry. And she does have patches on her that say, please don't pet me. I'm working. So, you know, and, um, and a lot of parents, um, especially in my neighborhood, are being very good with teaching their kids. They're like, oh, no, no, don't touch the dog. He's, they're working. And things like that are asked to pet. Um, but the one thing that gets to me the most is the parents that say, like, I don't mind the look a doggy. I don't mind that. That's fine. Cleo's very, you know, she's responsible. She's working. She knows she takes her dog very seriously, but it's when the parents encourage the kid to distract my dog. That's, that's where I get a little irked. They're like, say hi to the puppy. I'm like, don't, don't say hi to the puppy. Please. So don't say hi to the dog. Like you can observe the dog from afar. Tell me, you can say, give your dog thanks for me. Or will you give your dog extra cuddles when you get home? Your dog is doing a great job. You know, things like that. Um, 
but I'm already anxious enough. I don't need to deal with everything else. Plus I'm already in a zone. I, I'm overstimulated and I black everything out. So I do apologize if I come off as rude in person. Um, it's just that I'm trying to go from point A to point B and get my stuff done. I, it's nothing against you. It's not, no slight against you. So, but that's, um, that's just ha dealing with service dogs. Just don't, don't touch them. They're just, they're an extension of that person. You wouldn't take their cane away. Don't distract their dog because it is a life and death situation. Um, diabetic alert dogs, seizure alert dogs. Those dogs have to be maintaining their person and making sure that they can cue their person to go sit down if they're about to have a seizure or a diabetic crash, things like that. Um, Cleo needs to constantly be alert of my surroundings so I can, I watch her because um, she is a hunting dog, she's a sighthound. So I watch her for her cues if there's something dangerous around me. So I can book it or I can, if I'm in a conversation, um, I can have her give me a signal to get out and be like, oh my God, I have to go to the bathroom. Bye. Bye. So it's, it's just, don't distract the dog. Ask if you really want to pet the dog. And a lot of times, like even with her vest on, I've had some people, I can tell they're having a really rough time. And since she is um, a service dog and she is for a lot of emotional therapy as well, if I see someone having a hard time and they really want to pet her and they ask, I will be like, you know what? Yes. And she has the signal of being off duty. I tell her off duty. And um, I let that person pet her. And she will tell me if someone's having a bad time and she tries to go to that person to go do her job and comfort them. That's, that's her job. So, um, but just ask politely. And if we say no, just understand. I saw a horrific video last night and it's making its rounds thankfully, especially on Sad Panda. Um, this woman was told no, and she got irate and angry and aggressive to the, this group of people with their service dogs. They were having a meetup at a mall and she asked if she could pet the dog. The girl who's getting sick of people asking she said flat out no, which is her right. And they had patches all over their dogs to say don't stare, which is, is an aggressive um, thing towards towards dogs, but don't, don't stare, just, you know, don't pet, don't know. So this woman just felt so entitled to touch these dogs and was screaming and angry and holding her child, teaching her child this behavior, which is completely out of line. And I could see these handlers like the girls that weren't even involved in the conversation, they were clinging to their dogs. They were so scared, so upset, and they were clinging to their dogs for support because this woman was triggering their own anxiety. And it's, it, it's, it makes us anxious enough to take our dogs into public places nowadays because we have to worry about fake service dogs attacking our dogs and all the things like that. And, and, and it's just, it's overwhelming for us and we can't, handle this. You, we, we beg you, we implore you, please respect our space and let us get our work done. Let our dogs get their work done. And so we can actually be able to come out in public and be like everybody else. That's just, that's what we are. We're normal people. We just have a service dog. Um, so my ex fiance hated my Akita. She, she was um, jealous of my dog. And like, that's the best way anyone that I have spoken to describes her is um, when I describe what happened, they're like, oh, she was jealous of your dog. She made me keep my dog home. She said my dog was a crutch. I would never get better with my dog. And little did she know that dog, Sachiko, helped me function. She helped me stay grounded when I was in public. She helped me feel safe. Because I was living in Salt Lake City alone and with a, a female bodied person alone in Salt Lake City is pretty scary. So I had a giant dog. She was 75 pounds, not giant by Ikea standards. She was petite, but she was still big and scary and nobody messed with me, but they still, people would let their kids come up and pet her. I had some kids try to ride her at Walmart once 
and like they pressed on her spine and I just looked over and I'm like, you are so lucky my dog is patient with children. So, um, but so a, a service dog, an actual service dog is trained to um, have a task be good in public. They do not go after other dogs. That's, they are trained not to play with other dogs. They are trained to just ignore them. And some dogs are a little better at it than others, but you will not see a dog lunge. You will not see them rear up. You will not see them snap. You will not see them, if they have the full service patch, they should be at their owner's side, paying attention to what they're supposed to do. Um, I was at a convention and someone had a mesh vest on their dog and it said service dog and it was um, it looked like a gun dog like a, a Britney Spaniel type and this dog was pulling at the leash lunging rearing up whining crying not in an aggressive manner he just wanted to play with Cleo he's like oh my friend I'm gonna play and Cleo just looked at him like seriously bro like both Cleo and my horse have this wonderful work ethic about them where if they see another animal acting up when they're in a work environment they kind of look at that other animal and be like dude you dumb <laughs> and that's what cleo was doing to this dog she just gave him a look of what are you doing <laughs> and i could tell that that dog was if, if you're if your dog is in training they will have a training patch on says in training do not put the full service patch on them if they're not finished with their training Cle like cleo is still always in training and so is my horse we're always working on new things on new skills new behaviors things like that we're always constantly working just to keep things exciting but when your dog is not at that level of be quiet, composed, at your owner's side, do not pull on your leash, things like that. They, they can't wear that service patch yet. I'm sorry, just don't do it because it makes the us legitimate holders of these service animals look bad and people are gonna think that we have fake service animals, especially those with different breed of dogs that you don't normally see, like Cleo is a Basenji. They're not known to be service dogs. Um, because they're, they're harder to train. People don't know how to communicate with them as well as a German Shepherd, a Golden Retriever, a Labrador. Um, they're, they're harder to, to, to understand because they're very independent cat-like and they're just so smart. And that's, but that's what I want her. She's perfect for me and that's, and we'll be getting a new puppy in a couple of years, hopefully. Um, I've spoken with a breeder and there are, three service dogs in the line she has. Um, and they've all been tested for Bernconi syndrome. They've all, no seizures in the lines at all. And the great grandmother was just put down this year at the ripe old age of 17. So long, long lived dogs. Um, Cause Cleo is nine. She's, we gotta retire her soon. Um, her tummy issues are just getting too bad, but um, we want something so she can teach that dog as well. Um, Take a lot of work off of me so um yeah that's that's rule number one of being a decent person to handlers and service dogs don't don't touch the dogs um when you see horses on the road please slow down but don't don't creep up on us i rode my horse to the bank and um I don't trail ride much anymore. I'm actually very scared of the horse community right now. But um, so I just ride in my city and I do, um, I go to the bank and uh, go to Walmart, go to Starbucks. Uh, Starbucks adores us. And I sometimes have Cleo on my back, in her backpack and we have a good time. But I had one car, it was really weird and it scared the, the dickens out of me. This person was creeping behind us and I moved out of the way in the park. I moved into a parking space like I would a normal car so I could get out of their way because Judge was slow and he was kind of unsure of where we were. 
they didn't go past us. They kept creeping on us. They were taking our picture and video of us, which is fine and dandy, but you are sneaking up on a horse like a predator. Please, you're lucky my horse, I'm lucky my horse is so well behaved and he doesn't care about that. But you don't know the level of training that horse has. So just, we just asked to move, move to the side a bit give us space so if our horse just like a bike rider so you so in normal traffic school they teach you uh for if you're passing a bike rider give them as much space if they were to fall so this is them upright here's your car so if they fall here you want to give this much space so you have this much space to give them if they fall so a horse like this horses do this so you want to give as much space as the horse is long. Just so if that horse decides to spin around, do that thing, you know, you can get out of the way, not clip them. So it's just, and again, don't creep up on us. Just slow down enough, like to maybe 30 miles an hour. Just slow down and just keep going on your way. Don't honk, don't rev, don't do anything that'll freak our horses out. I've seen too many explosions and horses just lose their collective shit and just almost kill their rider because they when when horses get into their flight response they lose all collective thought they're just run and some some riders do not have the proper seat or they they lose their seat they, they can get caught in their stirrups you just got to be so careful just just give us space respect us and we're good um same with horse trailers on the road don't follow too close. Pass with caution. Know that we are slower to stop and we take very wide turns. Help us stay safe on the road because these are our babies in the back of our car. So, you know, they're, they're precious to us and each horse is one in a million to, to us. So you just got to be really careful. It's hard to replace a good horse. It's, it really is. I mean, there's thousands of horses out there, but they're not our horse. So, and plus gut bills are this. It costs judge costs us like 150 bucks just to get a checkup and his vaccinations every spring. So horses are pricey, but you know, just just be a decent human being. Um, and back to friendship. Um, so this year with with the crap that's happened, I am phenomenally blessed with my friendships. We. I learned who my real friends were. I I was hurt. I was beaten down. And then, you know, if someone ends a friendship with me, that's fine. But to continue to harass me, spread lies about me, and make it about you, and then call the police on me uh, for things I've never done, and get your friends to call the police on me for stupid things. That's just, it's petty, it's disgusting. And involving other people is disgusting. You couldn't just leave it between us, just let it go. I wanna be left alone and left to live my life. If I hurt you in any way, bring it up with me immediately so we can fix the problem, talk about like adults and it's over and done with. If you don't wanna be my friend, cool. I will be very, very sad, but just leave it at that. So the cosplay community is becoming so toxic and so disgusting. I've been in this game for 25 years. I've been cosplaying since I was in high school and it was, it's never been, like I was always bullied in high school, it happens. But I used cosplay to escape. I used video games to escape. I used role playing to escape. I, I could go to these communities and feel safe because we were all in it for the one thing and that was to just escape everybody that was hurting us. So you would go into a chat room and be like, hi, I'm Sam. and I'm from so-and-so, or I'm here to play this character. I hope I'm welcome. And you have you know, SSJ Goku, you're like, hey man, what's up? Don't mind us, we're, we're just having a blast. And Gandalf's over here like, yeah, let's pop open a keg and fight some Balrogs, let's do some stuff. 
and then you have your little troll and everybody's like oh it's just the troll that's fine i saw this post today and i was like that is how it was back then now role playing started everybody would you can't play a mary sue oh heaven forbid you play another character related to a canon character you created yourself how do you think inspiration happens you can't do this you can't do that like you can't play a canon character or if you're a furry you're automatically some kind of pervert it, it was disgusting how i'm seeing all these these things happen so i go on to f Ethless, which is more of a furry based community, but I'm not a furry. I play my canon characters and my original characters with ease in my room that I created back in the days of Anna said sanctuary. It's a hot spring. And I, and since this year has been happening and with my mental health declining, I've been having more and more episodes of anger and just full out. I go way past a a trigger point where I'm I can't go back like it's the anger it's a red zone and I just see red and I think everything is against me so I'm so blessed with these friends that I have now in this room for putting up with me for for being understanding and patient with me when I have these moments where I can't I don't know what reality is I don't know if what they're saying is an attack on me or if I, I just don't know and so they help walk me through it and they're just very patient with that so I hold friendship very sacred it is one of the most important things in life and you should always always hold it sacred like if someone slights you talk it out with them it's not worth destroying a life it's not worth destroying your friendship and I almost lost a really dear friend this week because I thought she was mad at me I thought she was attacking me because she was having a bad time and I knew something was wrong I didn't want this to turn into something that had happened this year so I went to my other horsey friend I said hey you guys know her what should I do I think this is this is what I'm perceiving is this right and they're like oh no she's kind of abrasive like just go talk to her she's a really nice person and I'm like she is I'm just really scared and they're like you got this just go talk to her and you can do this which is what you always do so I went and I talked to her and I found out she had lost someone very dear to her and she's just been having a really rough time so I'm like knew something was wrong so this is how I was perceiving what you were doing saying to me and this is how I felt, but I'm glad that what I felt was not reality. So we talked it out and we're friends again. And well, we were always friends, but we are now even more friends. And I, I got, you know, just in these little texts, I was able to say, get to know what, what's going on. So just message your friends and just talk it out. Don't bring something into the open. Don't bring others into it. Just work it out if you can. That's, that's how to be a decent human being. Um, so I made a, a post and I was informed about a new meme going around called the NPC meme. And it made a lot of sense to me. Me being a hardcore gamer, this made the most sense to me than anything else. And it was, it helped me able to go through and, um, and, and figure out why things are happening the way they are and i i said crappy people like that woman that berated the service dog owners the people that have hurt me the people that can hurt you people that are just ridiculous and you're like how is this possible how are these people even being decent or not decent how how can how does this happen you know like the stupid people that like that, that just do the dumbest things you read about. And you're like, what? Well, I figured it out. I figured it out. They're NPCs. Crappy people are just NPCs that are there to fill in the gaps of the game or give you a quest, even if it's a bad quest and you have to kill them in the end. But that's all they are. They're just the guy over there that says they were 
an adventurer like you once totally took an arrow to the knee or they're that Athenian soldier over there you have to just go kill because they're annoying you know but don't kill people that's what video games are for take your aggression out on your video games not, not on people but that's that that's been my my way of trying to deal with with the fact that people are crappy they're just there to help you level up and if it's either by taking them out not literally but taking them out of your life you just leveled up you just gained some experience in getting rid of negativity in your life you learned how to, you learned that skill set and you got rid of that person so it's it's the same way and as video games you can put that into real life um and and it really helped and and i also encourage any of my friends that are struggling with anxiety and depression um, and ptsd look into dbt therapy it's done wonders for me i i'm more grounded i'm more i'm able to focus on things um if you ride horses like i do um we do what's called mindfulness training and dbt and when i'm on my horse the mindfulness practice is there because i am paying attention to his ears his breathing his movement and how he feels under my saddle that's why my saddle is so very um it's a mix between western and english it's so i can have more contact with him and he and, and so i can feel him move i can feel him tense i can feel make sure where he is so if he's tense i relax myself and i center myself on him and i talk to him more and i say look it's okay buddy we've got this you've got me i'm going to guide you through it and we do it and and we get through it i i do tense up a bit to make sure because if he does i can feel him get tense 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 and when horses do that sometimes they they get so tight and wound up then they become they explode and you can either have a rodeo on your hand or something like that so you, i have to make sure i'm safe and keeping him safe so i have my hand down ready to pull his head to the side to get his attention and be like no we can't do that we are in a public area we can't do that so in mindfulness you're pretty much doing that but with light you're paying attention to the trees the wind the sky taking paying attention to each little detail of all that's around you and it's kind of it's it's like meditation but for those of us that have like ADHD and they can't you can't focus on meditation because there's just so much hitting you at once so meditate by paying attention to all that and and it really does help ground you and make you make you feel better oh that's my ear right now oh, I pop my neck but so to be a person you have to a good person you have to pay attention to yourself get yourself healthy and just be a good person and care about people i i i like to volunteer my time when i'm in costume um because the community has given me so much I've become, I, I have, I have followers in Germany, Florida, place, people I've never met before suddenly follow me. And I'm very eternally grateful for that. And so I want to give back to the community as well as give back to people that don't even know what cosplay is. I want to why i do this is not just my escape anymore it's when i put robin on i see kids just out of their minds excited to see robin with and i put and i put costumes on cleo now because it makes her more approachable and and it hide and and i do put her kind of off she's kind of off duty when she's in costume because i let her help these kids out and they see ace the bat dog and robin you know it's it's the best part of their day and 
that is the most rewarding thing to me is to see smiles. When I do Caesar and I carry around that cross, oh yeah, it's the worst part of what happens to Caesar. But people love the joke of Caesar carrying his his cross around. That's just that's why I made that big <laughs> that big cardboard cross. But people get a kick out of the jokes and the puns and so that's why I do it. I just, I, I want people to be happy. I want the world to just be loving and not hateful anymore. We have so much hate in this world. The horse community is too toxic as it is. Why do we have to tear each other down? Why do we have to destroy each other? Not once have I ever told somebody that what they're doing is wrong. Never. I, I don't like horseshoes. I don't like bits. Judge wants a bit, so I put it put one in his mouth, but I try not to touch it. But I don't shoe him because his feet need to flex. Horse feet need to flex. But if you shoe your horses, that's, that's your business. I will suggest, be like, did you know that this is how a horse hoof works? A lot, not a lot of people know the knowledge of what horse, horse feet do. And I, I will share my knowledge, and it's up to them if they want to do use that knowledge or not as long as I don't if, if I see you like actively harming your horse yes I will say something I will tear you to shreds but you know just just don't 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 hurt people be kind to people don't don't take your vendetta out on people don't take your anger out on people you never even met before that's what video games are for Go kill some imaginary people. That's what role playing is for. You know, go and destroy some some villains. Make a story with other people and become a hero in your story. Go write. Go do something. But don't hurt other people because these people are living just like you are, and they're trying to get by every day just like you are. So, you know, it's 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 just a, it's a tough world, and we just don't know more 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 jerks in it we don't need it um you can be a self-proclaimed asshole my big brother charlie is but he still he still has the biggest heart i've known of a lot of people but and he's one of my heroes charlie is one of my my greatest heroes and he he's 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 asperger's so, he, and he's on that, that asshole end of the spectrum of Asperger's, but he was still, he's a genuine person. So you can be blunt, you can be honest, you can be outspoken. In fact, please be outspoken. Scream your thoughts from the highest mountain you can find. Fight for what you believe is right, which is what I'm doing right now. Don't hurt people. So, but that's my message to you guys. I need to get back to work and get this dining room ready. Um, so, um, I'll try to be on tonight on Odyssey and um, we'll take out some more forts. So, happy holidays. Leo's asleep. My fire's out. So, I'll talk to you guys later if I can figure out how to end this thing.